So <coughs> I propose that we start. And uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues and uh, guests. And uh, as uh, IAF president, it's uh, for me uh, both uh, pleasure and uh, honor, great honor to uh, welcome you to this uh, afternoon session of the Global Networking Forum. This uh, evening presentation will be focusing on uh, some of the most exciting and the current activities in space. And I would like to sincerely thank our guest speakers for being here today. So thank you. Because, uh, in fact, uh, the first event of this uh, evening, which is uh, jointly organized by uh, JAXA, the Japanese uh, Space Agency, and uh, the IAF, will be focusing on international space exploration and will provide a comprehensive report on the recent uh, ISF-2. ISF-2 means uh, International Space Exploration Forum, which uh, has been held in uh, March uh, 2018, so a few weeks ago in Tokyo. And uh, this uh, second uh, international forum was a great success. And uh, it was a major milestone setting forth the next step towards future international space exploration. So today we have a quite exciting GNF event and uh, it will bring together experts reporting on the outcomes of uh, ISF2 and uh, the associated industry and the next generation events and it will include as well a lively discussion on the way forward leading to ISF3 which will be held in Europe in a few years from now. So Without uh, further delay, please uh, give a warm welcome to the Master of Ceremony for this uh, unique event, Mr. Shishiro Kibe from JAXA and also Vice President of EIF. Shishiro, it's yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for our kindest uh, open remarks and uh, Mr. President, and uh, many thanks to the all of you and uh, for joining our GNF event on ISEF, International Space Exploration Forum 2. And uh, as uh, Mr. President told you, and it was successfully held uh, in Tokyo, Japan, and at the beginning, uh, at the end of last month, uh, no, no, at the beginning of this month, I think. Okay, and it's uh, in some sense, and it's very, very hot topics, and uh, we appreciate IAF for giving us a very, very fantastic op and a timely opportunity to reach wider audience. And uh, we organized this uh, GNF in double-folded manner, and uh, that means uh, it consists of two sessions, and one is a uh, uh, reporting session, it, uh, which is focused on outcome of the uh, ISF-2. The second part is a panel discussion. I think it, it must be, a, uh, it will be a very exciting and uh, we will discuss about the future activities beyond the ISF-2 and which will be moderated by Dr. Werner from ESA. I'm sure that and you will enjoy that. And uh, it is my great pleasure and my honor and to be here to proceed this uh, first session of this GNF. And uh, I'd like to start it and with a talk by Miss Kathy Rorini from NASA and she is a chair of uh, uh, ISEC, uh, ISEC G. And ISEC G means an international and uh, space exploration coordination group and it is an entity to discuss the future collaboration international cooperation on space exploration. And uh, her talk is on the newly issued uh, uh, roadmap issued by ISEX-G. And I'm sure that uh, her talk will give you uh, some kind of a prerequisite and uh, for the discussion today from now on. Okay, and uh, Miss Kathy, and uh, you have a floor. <laughs> Please enjoy. Thank you very much, Kibesan. 
So, um, yeah, as was mentioned, I am the uh, current chair of the ISEG. I think I'll be chair for another couple of weeks. I'm, I've, uh, we've handed over the chairmanship of ISEG to JAXA, so JAXA will assume the chairmanship of ISEG uh, very shortly. Um, I'm going to give you a little brief overview of the Global Exploration Roadmap. The Global Exploration Roadmap was a, a key piece of the um, preparatory material for the ICEF-2. So the Global Exploration Roadmap is a, is a human space exploration roadmap. It, and it reflects the consensus of the agencies that participated in its development um, on what the future of human space exploration will look like. It recognizes that um, to be successful, human exploration will proceed uh, in synergy, in, in partnership with robotic exploration, and, and together they will make the future of space exploration sustainable. The product was first released in 2011 and updated in 2013. We did release an update uh, in January of 2018 to support the ICEF. Um, we wanted to make sure that the participants had a, a, a more concrete view of what the future might look like as envisioned by the, part, by the agencies that are participating in ISEG. Um, it, the reason to release it in, in, uh, in 2018 was really twofold, though. Um, for those of you that, that follow the, the status of human space exploration planning, you know that we're, we're um, with SLS and Orion, we're ha heading towards a first test flight uh, of that integrated system as early as the end of 2019. And then we will um, begin to establish a gateway in cislunar space. And, and uh, inside the US, we have strong support from our government for this plan. And we're pretty happy about being able to make some concrete steps in getting all this going this year. And we are hoping that this, we are hoping that this global, expert road, global exploration roadmap will, put, will help our partners um, uh, in, in consulting with their governments to get, uh, get funding support to participate in that endeavor. So within ISEG, the, the discussions that led to the Global Exploration Roadmap included things like our common goals and objectives, uh, the benefits to society of exploration. And we also talked about how we could leverage our current investments in things like technologies or human research, um, uh, the, the kind of things we're investing in now to enable um, uh, a greater, uh, uh, an output that's greater than the sum of the parts. So how can we leverage and, and coordinate our investments? But what I want to talk about a little bit in more in depth is the kind of discussions we had that led to the roadmap, the pathway itself. So these were strategic strategic discussions on the topics listed here. So we talked about sustainability principles. You know, what would a, an exploration endeavor that would span multiple decades have to look like? What are the principles that would uh, have to underpin such a plan? Things like affordability, robustness, partnerships, not only international partnerships, but pri partnerships with the private sector, um, delivering benefits to, to society. Um, those are examples of the kind of principles that went into the planning of the, of, the, of the roadmap. We talked a lot about low Earth orbit and the importance of ISS, and, the, and the, not only for the research and the, and the technology demonstrations that are going on on board ISS today to prepare for exploration, but we talked about what the future of LEO might look like and how ISS could prepare that. So the ISS partners really see LEO as being, as continuing to be an important exploration, an important domain for human activity. So how can we um, work together to uh, use ISS and, and, and other supporting activities to enable a future in LEO that may be driven by the private sector? So those are the kinds of strategic discussions that you see reflected in this Global Exploration Roadmap. We talked a lot about the moon, and uh, this roadmap reflects a consensus now. You know, in the past, we've had this moon versus Mars um, narrative that gave our governments that were, uh, we were asking to invest in space exploration uh, the impression that we didn't have a global concurrence. But now we do, and the message is strong in this Global Exploration Roadmap that, that the moon is an important step on the way to Mars. We talked about the importance of a gateway in the lunar vicinity and why a first uh, foundational element like that is, uh, is a critical part of a sustainable human exploration endeavor. You know, it's, it, it is a critical part because it is, um, it is accessible not only by NASA 
exploration launch vehicles, but it's, it's, it's accessible by commercial launch vehicles. It also opens up the opportunity to use a, uh, to build exploration architectures on the basis of reusability, which is something that is, uh, is important. So, so the, the cons consensus on the importance of the lunar vicinity and how that would be used to explore the surface of the moon um, are discussed in this roadmap. And then, as always, Mars remains our consensus driving or horizon goal. You know, the, 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 um, the idea is to keep Mars in front of us. Nobody thinks we're going to get to the moon and say we're done. You know, there's always going to be Mars. Um, there's always going to be something on the horizon. And, and, and you need to be driven by that so you maximize the value of your near-term investments. So for example, if we explore the moon with a pressurized rover, to take the crew around on the moon, it darn well better be the first generation of the rover that will be used on Mars. So keeping those kinds of, um, uh, talking about Mars and the challenges of Mars and how the moon can help um, mitigate those challenges is what, what we, uh, we spent a lot of time on. So this is our, our, our iconic, if you will, roadmap chart that you see in this document. You see very visibly the importance of LEO and how LEO will continue um, uh, well into the future. You see the emerging China Space Station. They've talked about, uh, about it meant multiple times at IACs and, and IAF forum, other IAF forum. Um, the, the China Space Station is discussed in this document. And then future platforms um, that will continue human presence in LEO well into the future. You see Orion and SLS in the late 2019, early 2020 time really opening up the frontier of humans in, uh, beyond low Earth orbit. You see that we envision these missions not only enabled and supported by the Orion and SLS, but by commercial transportation systems as well. And the Russians are working on a transportation system that um, will start out delivering crew to the ISS, but ultimately be used to deliver uh, crew to the moon. You see the gateway, which we, we plan to start um, uh, deploying early next decade around the moon. And you see the gateway staying in, in the lunar orbit um, into the future to not only serve as a staging post for, for human missions to the surface of the moon, but also a staging post for the Mars transportation capabilities. And you see the human lunar lander about the end of the next decade. That's when we thought about who might um, who might want to provide that, that capability? Are those, or, or human, who, or, or um, uh, not just singular, but those agencies that may want to provide human lunar capabilities? <clears throat> Thinking about where we are today and the, the government approvals and budgets necessary, we all kind of agree that it's probably the end of the decade before those missions are going to be enabled based on where we are today. And then after the moon, you see um, Mars with Mars transportation capabilities and later in the 2030s, missions to Mars. <coughs> so, seems like a good time to stop. I'm not sure. Well, this indeed is my last chart, so let me stop here. I can take uh, two or three uh, short questions um, so from the floor. No? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have, and uh, we'll make uh, some time to, 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 to for, for the, uh, additional questions or comment. Okay. And then uh, you finish the prerequisite. Then uh, we go. We uh, will go move on to the uh, uh, core point, and uh, the f second speaker is uh, 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 Shintaro Hara. Uh, he's a deputy director of uh, Office of Space Utilization Promotion, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. Next. Thank you, Kibe-san, for your kind introduction. Uh, it is my great honor and pleasure to present the result of the Second International Space Exploration Forum, ICF-2, held in Tokyo on March 3rd. ICF-2 was organized by Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, mixed of Government of Japan, and together with JAXA and relevant governmental organizations uh, like Cabinet Office. 
Uh, as you may know, a couple of ministerial conferences uh, were held in Europe since 2009 uh, to promote international collaboration uh, in the field of space exploration. Uh, then, the first ISEF was held in Washington, D.C. in 2014. At the meeting, uh, Minister of Next at that time uh, announced uh, the intention to host the next ISEF meeting in Tokyo. The second meeting, uh, what is called ISEF II, uh, was held with the participation of high-level governmental uh, representatives from 42 nations and three international intergovernmental organizations. ISEF II was chaired by Minister of Next, uh, Mr. Hayashi, and moderated by Dr. Koichi Wakata, uh, astronaut and ISS program manager of JAXA. <coughs> ISEF 2 consists of opening session, um, panel discussion, uh, information session, uh, live call to International Space Station, and closing session. Uh, at the beginning of the forum, uh, a video message from Japanese Prime Minister Abe was introduced, and he called for reinforcing international cooperation and collaborating to take a great step onto the moon and further exploration. The panel discussion was then uh, held under three themes. Uh, one, uh, significance and benefit of space exploration. Second, uh, promotion of international space exploration. And third, implementation of human and robotic uh, space exploration programs and projects through national and international collaboration. There are two moderators and six to eight panelists for each session. The result of panel discussion is reflected in three outcome documents of ISEF-2 which were accepted with applause from the participants at closing session. At closing session, it was also announced from representatives of Italy and EU that next ISEF would be co-chaired by Italy uh, together with another major European country by 2021. And this slide summarizes an outline of three output documents of ISEF-2. The first document is joint statement which describes conclusion with important recognitions through four-day intensive discussions <coughs> of ISEF-2. The content includes significance of space exploration and benefits for humankind, and reason for national investment, also significance of international cooperation, and increasing number of new players as well. Joint statement refers two documents which were also concluded at ISEF-2. One is Tokyo Principle for International Space Exploration, uh, which describes common principles to advance uh, international space exploration sustainably, effectively, and efficiently. The content includes peaceful purposes and benefits for humankind, relation between science and space exploration, cooperation with academic and private sector organizations, and sustaining outer space environment. The other document is terms of reference of ISEF, which describes basic parameters related to its function to make ISEF a continuous international effort. In addition to these documents, forum summary is in process to br brief the outline of discussions at ISEF-2. Uh, there, were, uh, there were three side events, uh, ISEF for Industries, what we call IISEF. Uh, second one, ISEF for Young Professionals, uh, which we call YISEF. And third one is ISEF for Students, uh, we call uh, SISEF. The last one, SISEF, was a domestic event uh, with the participation of Japanese high school students. Uh, Mr. Gomi uh, will introduce the detail of IISEF and YISEF after, afterwards. 
Uh, I would like to introduce two examples of discussions at ISF2. Uh, some countries mentioned expectation to space exploration from the viewpoint of creating innovation as well as its impact to economy. Other countries pointed out the importance of coordination between governmental and private activities since the business model of, on space exploration is uh, still immature. Another example of discussion at ISF2 is on standardization and uh, toward cooperation with industry and various countries in deep space exploration. NASA introduced that it had released a draft of international deep space interoperability uh, standards for public comment on seven priority areas, such as communication and robotics. I would like to express our deepest appreciation to all uh, the ISF2 participating countries and organizations for their kind cooperation. I hope the ISF2, including the side events, will be a stepping, stepping stone for the further cooperation and advancement of international space exploration. Uh, today, uh, we prepared uh, some program books for those who are interested uh, in the detail uh, of ISF2 and would like to put on the reception desk in front of this room. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank, thank you very much, from, uh, Mr. Hara, and uh, for your uh, concise and uh, well-organized and overview of the ISF2 and outcome of that, of that conference. Next, and uh, as he mentioned in his speech, uh, talk, and uh, you know that JAXA, as a national space agency, sub, uh, supported this event. As you know that ISF is a, a governmental level event, and JAXA supported that. And he is one of the supporters. And his talk today is on the ISF2 effort on expanding community for the future. Okay, Mr. Gold. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm Junko Mi, uh, JAXA ISF2 office. I'd like to the report the <coughs> Uh, second International Space Exploration Forum, ICF2, uh, side event. ICF2 uh, plenary uh, is a ministerial level meeting. Uh, <coughs> people uh, cannot attend the, this plenary meeting. So we had a plan to the uh, engage more people uh, with uh, uh, different background in space explorations. We had a plan to the two kind of side event. W one is a uh, uh, industry uh, event, and the second one is a next generation uh, young professional uh, <coughs> event, uh, including a domestic uh, high school student event. ICF2 uh, side event uh, <coughs> scheduled uh, from February 28th to March 3rd. Uh, I'd like to, this slide shows the IICF uh, <coughs> participant and uh, participant uh, nationalities. On March uh, 2nd, uh, IS, I, I, ISF uh, for Industries, uh, organized by Cabinet Office, uh, MEXT, Ministry of Education, and uh, METI, Ministry of uh, <coughs> Economy, Trade, and Industry, and JAXA, uh, supported by AIWA. Uh, total 580 participants, uh, including a uh, 241 companies uh, plus uh, live broadcast, uh, this is by internet. Uh, audience is uh, 15,000 people uh, plus uh, exhibitions. Uh, 
241 companies, including the uh, uh, 60 uh, foreign companies. Uh, participants uh, from various fields, aerospace, uh, construction, finance, etc. And uh, participants also uh, from uh, 25 countries uh, all over the world. Uh, this slide shows topics uh, for panel discussion. This side event I ISAF uh, topics uh, focused on the, uh, these uh, four panels. Uh, panel one is uh, 20, in 20, 2030, uh, what is the <coughs> uh, socio-economic condition and uh, uh, what is the benefit of space explorations? And panel two is a current activity of uh, uh, <coughs> private sectors uh, one. And panel three is uh, uh, other industries activities uh, in space exploration. Panel four is a summarize of uh, <coughs> uh, panel one to three uh, to discuss the policy measures for uh, space exploration businesses. About 30 speakers uh, or uh, panelists uh, took a presentation uh, for these uh, four panelists and uh, two highlight presentation. Uh, summary report of uh, IICEF uh, at uh, uh, ISAF 2 uh, ministerial level uh, meeting uh, on <coughs> March 3rd. I, I say uh, way forward, uh, I think uh, 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 increasing the number of players uh, in the private sectors. Uh, in ICF2, uh, about uh, 240 uh, companies uh, attend the meeting uh, and discuss the, uh, what is the uh, uh, private sector's role. And uh, <coughs> uh, I think, uh, for example, the uh, ac 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 accelerating the new companies' engagement in the space exploration, uh, for example, the uh, joint research between the <coughs> space agency and the non space companies, and the support of uh, uh, launch opportunities and the friendly interface for standardizations. And uh, the other one is a uh, number two, establish the uh, uh, cooperation mechanism between the public and private sectors. I, uh, I know the uh, already uh, information exchange, uh, for example, uh, ISAF or uh, MBA, uh, for public, pu for public, uh, private uh, pa partnerships. Uh, we have to, the, uh, uh, we have to continue the uh, I ISAF uh, kind of event uh, in uh, following uh, ISAF. And we also uh, partner partnership among the private companies and sharing the uh, joint development of uh, roadmap. Uh, second event is uh, YISF uh, for young professionals. Uh, 250 uh, people uh, applied uh, this event, and we select the uh, 90 people. Uh, and then uh, 79 participants uh, in Tokyo. 40% uh, uh, with uh, non-space background. This is a uh, very unique event. Uh, and the seven, uh, 27 countries, including the uh, moderators, uh, all over the world. Uh, Ms. <coughs> Marungoro uh, Zata, Mohe, uh, Isa will present uh, after my presentation uh, for uh, one of the uh, uh, 
YISF participant. YISF uh, was uh, organized by uh, MEX and JAXA, supported by SGAC. Uh, <coughs> YISF received uh, numerous support by facilitators, guest speakers, and seven uh, monitor <coughs> mentors, and nine evaluators, and ten uh, carrier mentors, and ten, ten moderators assigned for each, each team. Uh, this is a result of YISF uh, activities. Uh, we had uh, 10 teams. Uh, uh, team number five uh, was a winner. Uh, the <coughs> their problem definition is a sustainable production of protein in space. Uh, the other award uh, <coughs> as this slide. YSF, uh, this slide shows the YSF contributors, uh, mentors, evaluators, and uh, moderators, uh, the carrier mentors. I appreciate, uh, appreciate it for your uh, <coughs> contributions all over the world. I also uh, appreciate it for the 22 uh, sponsorship companies, including uh, six uh, foreign companies. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your kind attention. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, talk and about the side event, IYSF, IYSF and YISF and SYS. And uh, can I, I, we can take uh, one or two questions from the floor. Otherwise, and uh, you have to wait for the end of this uh, GNF. Okay? Okay, thank, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, please uh, provide the uh, YISF uh, short video, uh, about three minutes.
Okay, I'm sure that you enjoy this film. And I'm so sorry, and I missed the, your question. And maybe you have. Uh, well, um, how to reduce uh, the telecommunication or to prevent uh, medical intervention and so on. Uh, what uh, what um, uh, will you do with uh, with uh, this question now that you have listed them? Yes, um, you presented um, a slide with, uh, with questions that have been identified as uh, uh, important, and, uh, but uh, now that you have listed this question, what will you do with that? Is there a, a working group uh, on that or uh, it just uh, to, to make uh, people think about that? Uh, is there something? Um, planned uh, about this question. Uh, very wide uh, uh, questions, but uh, <coughs> uh, each team uh, decides uh, more detailed uh, program definitions. <coughs> so one of the team is the uh, life science, and one of the team of the uh, international cooperation way, uh, etc. Is this answer of the, uh, your questions? Okay, thank, thank you very much for Mr. Gomi. And uh, yes, and this is a talk about the side event and from the or another side. I think that uh, it's unfair to uh, not to hear from the participant side today. And we have a participant, uh, yes, and the representative from participants. And uh, Miss uh, uh, Margorata Mok and Gosia. And uh, he is a participant, uh, she, she was a participant of YISF program. And her talk today is on the ISF, YISF achievement. Okay. Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mago Jatamoch. I was a participant of, at uh, YISF in Tokyo last month. And uh, I'm a YGT at ISA ESTEC in Netherlands. Uh, I work in the coordination office on the human, human spaceflight and robotic exploration. I'm from Poland. Uh, I have a legal background. And also that uh, shows who were the participants of the, of the YISF. Uh, we were, uh, let's go this way. Uh, we were a completely uh, mixed up group from all over the world, over 25 countries, uh, different backgrounds, different nationalities, gender. My group, uh, my team was nine people and no one was doing the same thing. That's why the communication and finding consensus was uh, one of the challenges of why ISF. Um, <laughs> But coming back to the beginning, uh, when I got my positive um, email that I got into YISF in December, we actually started working already uh, in Teams. We work on an application called Slack, and every week or every two weeks we had Skype meetings, which having nine people in four different time zones, I was always the one get, getting a 7 a.m. time. Um, but we managed to come up with seven completely different ideas because YISEF was a 
competition of ideas, idea, idea ton. Uh, we've been working, um, we've been developing different ideas and um, we um, didn't find any, any consensus because we didn't know each other, we were talking on Skype. And um, when we met in Tokyo, I cannot take a credit for the idea we came, we came up with and I, and I think no one can because it was really a teamwork, really a group work. And, um, the topic uh, of the um, of the competition was new activities enterprises on the moon, Mar moon Mars and asteroids, and uh, we have to come up with the problem definition. So find some problem that really exists, and then come up with a value proposition. So come up with a solution that has to be novel, original, and creative. And we had to try not to use anything existing, but we could we could uh, back up our ideas with the existing uh, uh, research. Um, I can later talk about the ideas my team had. Um, we, um, uh, we've been working on that basically those two days in Tokyo, which maybe was a one day together, because on the first day uh, we had a tour in uh, JAXA facilities in Tsukuba. Later we met uh, in a startup hub where we sat at the table and it was basically a brainstorming of completely different ideas as we were, everybody was different and everybody had different um, idea, a different agenda that they wanted to, um, uh, to put forward. And on Friday, uh, on the 1st of April, uh, we had to pitch the ideas, the ten, all the 10 teams. And when I'm speaking about my team, the, t the work in the other teams looks very similar. Uh, we had to pitch the ideas in front of the jury. And uh, as I told you about the problem definition and value proposition, this is a slide we had to basically follow our discussion method. So it wasn't just let's talk, let's brainstorm, but we have to have an approach because as we were all different, having as me legal background, engineering, science, uh, business, um, uh, biology, we have to find a consensus. And the way we have to find it, it was also uh, this was, it was supposed to help us, <laughs> this slide. Um, but uh, I think the organizers also, um, this was the point to show us how the international cooperation in the space exploration works. Uh, this is the work, this is the photo how the work actually looked like. Uh, we've been sitting in a startup, uh, two, startup Hub Tokyo for two days, uh, brainstorming, um, coming up with sometimes really crazy ideas. And the next day we had, uh, uh, we had mentors. We had mentors from, uh, of course, also different um, um, facilities, different uh, rep representing different institutions that came to our table and listened to our idea. And then they showed us, oh, listen, this idea actually is bad or this is good, go with that. So it was very helpful because when we came up with our idea, we, we thought this great, but then uh, meeting with the um, uh, meeting with uh, mentors, uh, mentors help us uh, to make the idea better. And uh, maybe I will uh, quickly tell idea of my team. We came up with the recycling the de the space debris on the moon. Uh, we thought that the, the problem is that the future traffic and ma Mars uh, direction can be endangered by the debris, which is still growing. And we, we wanted to clean it up by using uh, some kind of a balloon net that would push the debris to the moon, moon bound. And uh, then we could uh, recycle the debris since we already have some uh, uh, materials close. We could use it as they're also ideas of, of the moon village. We also thought who could pay for that? That would be a public because we would create a game called Debris Go, something as a Pokemon Go that everyone would play and clean the debris, becoming a space janitor. And we'll be, we'll be paying for cleaning the debris, which will be some kind of a laser beam pushing the debris to the moon base. It wasn't, we had a day, uh, like two days uh, in practice a day to came up with the idea to create a presentation for five minutes presentation. So idea was not uh, totally uh, uh, worked out as other teams the same, but as a work, as a day of uh, teamwork 
and hard to come with a consensus. Uh, we were really proud of our idea, and actually, we were also um, uh, we also won an award from uh, a Dentsu, a, is a public relations advertising agency, who found our idea very creative, very explorat exploratory spirit in that. And also the idea that could sold out because of the game and that maybe the public could actually pay for the space exploration at some point for cleaning the debris. And the idea was also su sustainable because we're still gonna make a mess, we're still gonna make a debris, and we still have to clean it. It's like with cleaning your house, it's keep coming. It's not one time. So that's why we also thought of the sustainability of the idea. Um, so everyone got this cool spacesuit. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, this is a bit of our presentation, uh, slides of our presentation, because uh, for the five minutes of presentation uh, to the jury, uh, every team also has to present uh, actual um, uh, slides, um, create some uh, visual uh, help. There were the other teams, and actually the team that won the main award from, uh, for YISF was the team that came up with um, as um, was providing, using fungi as a, for the pr protein for the long uh, distance space flight. And they b backed it up with the research on the using fungi for malnutrition in Philippines, which actually were working on that. And the idea was really interesting, I might say. And second idea, um, the second award, um, uh, the idea was also really great. and. Uh, the team came up with uh, creating um, not exactly a moon village, but creating a shelter on the moon in uh, lava tubes on the moon. Since coming with the with the um, with the beginnings of humanity, we also started living first in caves. So why not in the moon? So those were the winning ideas, and um, altogether it was a couple other teams that won it. So. Um, as for me, it was an amazing experience, also first time visiting Japan, so I'm really grateful for the organizers for uh, accepting me and for creating this. Uh, it was really a networking event, lots of uh, powerful ideas and inspiring people, and also the lectures we had on the way and the mentors coming, uh, speaking with us, giving us some uh, push, a kick that this is actually a cool idea, and I know some teams want to publish, want to work more on their ideas, and want to publish them, or at some point make, make them happen. I don't know still about my team. I know they want to make it a VR as, a, as a maybe as a game, or as, a, as may, maybe making an awareness about the space debris and the, and, and the danger coming, up, uh, coming with that. Um, but as for me, uh, I really uh, felt inspired and uh, met amazing people and had a great time at YISF and I hope there will be at some point continuation of that because uh, a lot of young people could have a chance to, to at some point participate in an international cooperation for space exploration. So thank you. Thanks, thank you. Okay, and uh, thank, thank you very much, and uh, Gosia, and uh, thank you very much and, uh, for the positive feedback to our, uh, our uh, side event. And uh, can I take the, uh, it's positive? I think I mean that uh, you enjoyed, really enjoyed that? Yes. Okay. Hey, like this, and IYSF and the participant in IYSF is very satisfied with the event. And then I cordially asked the uh, future coordinator to continue this kind of activities, to expand the prayers to the young generation and recruit the young, young guys and ladies and to this arena, okay? Okay, and uh, maybe I need time to con uh, close on this uh, first se session and to hand over the floor to the uh, next moderator. And, but uh, before closing that, and uh, would you please and give them a big hand and for appreciation to the project. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, and uh, Dr. Berna, and you have the floor. Present, give me as a time for all of this because normally we should end at uh, seven o'clock. That is really soon, but first of all, I would like to 
uh, that the participants of this panel come over here because we want like would like to discuss about beyond ISF2. Uh, so please, uh, we have uh, Roberto Battiston over here. Uh, we have uh, Jean-Yves Legal, president of CNES and president of uh, IF. Then Yun Gomi, director ISF2 preparation office, who was already here. We have Val Monsami from uh, Sansa. Tim Tony from NASA and Carlo Mira from Space Product Sales Director. I will immediately start because uh, then you will see what we expect from the different participants of the panel. And, and it's about ISF2, ISF3 and beyond. And uh, the main question is, for instance, if you see something like that, we always have to uh, explain why are we doing uh, exploration. And of course, you know this mountain and people are climbing up. Do you have any idea why? It's an interesting question. Or do you know this place? Uh, this is the North Pole. And uh, there was not only the first one, but even now there are people are going to the North Pole and you can ask why. And uh, that's a similar question we have to answer sometimes when we are doing exploration. And therefore you are here, of course, you are all baptized, but I think you are also ambassadors to go out and uh, go to people and explain why are we doing this, uh, not only with the c confirmed and uh, the baptized one. So therefore, look here, some questions, and um, you can ask this question yourself or you ask this question to others. So for instance, do you want that research is doing all possibilities to better understand immune system, blood pressure, salt regulation and osteoporosis to find new methods of therapy? So if you say yes, you can already leave the room, it's everything fine. Do you want that we better understand the ecosystem Earth to co develop concrete instructions for present and future? Hopefully some are saying yes over there. Do you see the necessity benefit to understand the past, the present and the future of universe? This is already a difficult question if you ask it to politicians. They ask, uh, they ask back, is it within my term or not? And then, uh, do you think that we should use all means, especially space means, for peaceful global cooperation and for economic benefit? And finally, and this is a question where really people are changing from uh, one to the other people, do you still feel at least a spark of curiosity and the spirit of pioneering? And this is, of course, the main question. But if you say to one of these questions, yes, then you are in the right uh, audience today, then we are discussing about exploration, whether it's human or robotic. And therefore, we have some questions defined for this panel. And each of you can select, of course, which question you would like to have. But please try to be a little bit disruptive, because all of these people are talking each and every day about space. So they expect from you some new answers. So what are your expectations for the next ISAF? For instance, that should be not just uh, that we have another opportunity to meet and see. What are the incentives for emerging space nations to participate? Well, I expect from you some answer to this question. How to integrate private companies? So we heard one way it was done in Japan, but maybe also for, for not only for ISAF, but also for the exploration as such. And how to overcome tensions, conflicts, and crisis? Because we would like to cooperate, and I mentioned earlier the peace uh, as one of the goals of exploration. So, but how to do it in reality? And the final question is uh, maybe also an interesting one. Uh, which instruments for future space explorations? Thus, just the same as we did in the past, that the agencies are defining a project and then procure industry, and industry is then uh, uh, presenting and developing some of the technologies. With that, I already finished uh, the introduction. I hope it's now clear what I expect, what we expect from the discussion. And I would start with Roberto. Roberto, can you uh, give us at least one answer to one of the questions, uh, whatever is in your mind? If necessary, I can go back to the questions. Thank you. If not, come close to me. Them <laughs> because <laughs> no, because my mic is working. Ah, your mic yeah. is yeah. working, but yeah. also this one no, is not. It's working. It is? Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you. Working. Now this is working better. Um, so, um, several questions. Uh, I mean, uh, I, will, I will start uh, for the first one. I mean, uh, uh, Clearly, for us, the ISF 2 uh, was a, an extremely important uh, meeting. It was a great success, uh, and we thank very much the organizers for that. Uh, and now we are start uh, looking forward uh, to ISF 3, and uh, in this sharing uh, configuration, we are open to all possible collaboration. 
and we are welcoming uh, all the countries interested in providing these ideas and inputs. I mean, clearly, this is a global endeavor. I mean, I think it's very important to begin promptly uh, in the process of organizing a coordination to lead uh, to this ISF3. And uh, we, for this purpose, we propose uh, to set up a steering team quite, quite soon and to draft a roadmap for the preparation milestone for the ready for the next June. It seems very early, but uh, we know how those things uh, takes time uh, and uh, hopefully uh, new ideas and uh, and the stimulus uh, will uh, will make us busy in preparation uh, for the ISF3. I think the ISF3 will have um, three major drivers. Um, the Global Exploration Roadmap 3, uh, which is, has been recently revised by the International Space Station Exploration and Coordination Group, ICHCG. Uh, this will be the primary reference background and stronger cooperative effort to involve all the countries interested in space exploration and supporting the principle of ISF. I think this is uh, a, a process uh, making uh, really growing the number of uh, seriously interested countries to participate to exploration and the capitalization of the investment made on space exploration as a tool for space economy. I think uh, uh, with the more time it goes, the more space economy becomes part of our uh, space exploration package. Uh, and this has been, by the way, also mentioned very clearly in the recent uh, statement uh, by, the, the, by um, the, the US uh, administration. Roberto, so do you expect in that respect that in the ICEF, the next ICEF, there is a clear commitment uh, in the one or the other direction what you mentioned? So, or do you think it's just a meeting and then we have a common understanding of the importance of exploration. Can you imagine that there is something more concrete? The, which first, the first you said, of course, but I mean, uh, this is the outcome of a global effort. So you cannot say in advance which will be the mood at that time. Yeah, but uh, uh, what are your expectations or what are your hopes? I'm not optimistic by nature, so it's very easy to say that, uh, but uh, then reality comes uh, in. And uh, I think uh, if, you, if you ask me, space uh, is a driver for innovation and collaboration. But uh, collaboration, by definition, include uh, many people willing to do so, many organizations, many countries willing to do so. I mean, I think uh, what has been done for the International Space Agency has been a tremendously successful uh, effort, which uh, the people involved in that, uh, and that some of them are here, they know how f difficult, how long, how, how tiring it was, uh, but also how successful and positive and, last and lasting has been. I really w wish that similar process will be uh, started uh, by ISF3 and uh, will will contribute to, to this kind of uh, of uh, approach. Okay. I mean, but uh, of course, is is a is a combined effort. You cannot be alone in pushing for that. Okay, thank you very much. As I know that Val prepared something for the second question, I would like you directly, Val, if possible, to enter now to the scene. The remote control is on the on the desk, so because I know that you have a presentation. So what are the incentives for emerging space nations to participate? Um, um, uh, that means participate in the ISAF as well as participating in exploration. So can you move to the other presentation? There it is. Yes. And it should work, the presentation. Is the microphone on? The mic over here? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to very... Oh, there we go. Uh, go back a bit in history because I think some of the history is lost and maybe unknown to the colleagues in the room. But here's an example for a developing country who has been involved at the inception of space exploration. So in the 60s, there were three uh, deep space networks, Woomera, Goldstone, and South Africa, so in case you didn't know. Uh, so this is the facility that was opened in South Africa with NASA in 1961. That's a dish, a deep space uh, network dish. And if you followed the moon mission, there were a number of pre-missions before the Apollo mission. The, the Ranger, for example, was a mission where they crashed the, the spacecraft into the moon, but they took imagery of it. And here's a confirmation of South Africa's involvement from that deep space network. Um, then the survey mission was where you tried to do a soft landing on the moon. And we got it right on the seventh attempt. And this is Survey 7. And again, we supported it from the South African base. And then the lunar orbiter was essentially um, to take high resolution imageries. And there were 297 photos taken uh, from the lunar orbiter. And again, South Africa was involved in that. And then, then obviously the, the Apollo mission. 
But in parallel, there were other missions that were happening, and this is the mission to Venus, and you can see our involvement from South Africa. So there's a bit of history that I think is forgotten. And here's uh, support for the mission to Mars. And just by the way, the first image from Mars, which is this one, came via South Africa. This was in 1965, okay? But in 1974, NASA pulled out, and so we had a whole group of engineers left back in South Africa wondering what to do with this dish. And we converted that dish to a radio astronomy dish. And what actually happened is that dish became part of a VLBI network, which is very important for radio astronomy. But just to give you a sense of why VLBI is very important, if you had to measure the distance to stars and resolve the angular resolution, the way you would do it from optical astronomy is you would take a, d a measurement from one side uh, of the Earth and another side. And then by triangulation, you would get the distance to the stars. But the baseline was very important because the, the bigger the baseline, the, you reduce the errors in the calculation. And you can see, if you take South Africa out of that map, the, VL, the, the baseline gets reduced significantly. And so just to give you a sense, this is optical astronomy looking at the universe, the, the galaxy, uh, the Milky Way, and this is the radio image of the same. And what we're trying to do from an astronomy perspective is look at the universe from different wavelengths. And again, South Africa is involved, and given that experience, we have now hosting the Square Kilometre Array, which I think is a, maybe a not a contemporary uh, definition of space exploration, but we're doing it from the ground. And what this is trying to do is to get very close to what we call the epoch of reionization. That's when the first stars were actually switched off. And that's 13.7 billion years ago, looking at the start of the universe. And this is through the SKA, which is going to be the most sensitive radio telescope in the world. Okay. And just as the last one, I gave you a sense of the deep space network involvement in the early 60s. We're actually coming back again, because now there's renewed interest with the Mars and the Moon mission with South Africa and South America. And we're actually talking to NASA. Uh, we're supporting, uh, we are in discussion with JAXA for the Hayabusa mission. And uh, yeah, th I think this is going to be a reality. Thank you. Uh, before you leave that place, but what is the incentive then for emerging space agencies uh, to participate, uh, emerging space nations to participate? Is it just to, to deliver something or what do you see as the, the main driver for you? I think you put uh, the words, uh, the, the excitement, the, yes. the, you know, uh, to be involved. Okay. We don't want to be sitting watching from the side, we want to be part of it. And just to indicate, I mean, we are involved in a Luna and Mars mission. We are providing components to some of these missions, but of non-disclosure agreements we can't say with whom. <laughs> but we are involved in those missions. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Val. So now I go to the next, to Yun. Um, so, for you, of course, you can select the questions, but it would be nice if we can follow up because you were discussing earlier also about private companies and we see a lot of private companies now either, of course, working for agencies, but also sometimes uh, developing their own missions uh, in what sense or ever. So, how to integrate private companies, again, in ICF3, this is one thing, but I'm asking also beyond uh, how to, uh, to open the space uh, exploration also for industrial companies, private companies. Okay, uh, I'd like to select uh, number one, uh, I have three expectation, and uh, number three, uh, how to integrate the uh, private sectors. Is it okay yep. for you? Uh, it costs more. At yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, this is a minister level, uh, outcome is uh, some kind of uh, <coughs> uh, joint statement and uh, Tokyo principal or something like that. Uh, and uh, industry discussion uh, just started. And also we had the wonderful young professional various opinions. It is so good. Uh, we would like to continue to the, that kind of uh, uh, event. So, uh, minister level and uh, government level, space agency, industry, and uh, young professional uh, got got together to advance the space uh, explorations. Uh, this is a first step. Is uh, well, what is the second step? Uh, I, I think. Uh, 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 
cooperation, uh, what is the cooperation partnership uh, in, in details or uh, framework related to issues uh, and the negotiation process? Uh, uh, these are one of the uh, priority issues uh, in ICF-3. And uh, question number three, uh, uh, integration of uh, private sectors. I don't have uh, any uh, solutions, but uh, <coughs> uh, we, we would respect the autonomy of the uh, industry side. Uh, but uh, minimum basic infrastructure would be led by the uh, government. Okay. So, um, uh, but uh, uh, overall efficiency uh, uh, would need need to uh, to be considered. So it is a very uh, difficult uh, uh, questions. Uh, okay. In in IISF, uh, Airbus uh, one panelist is uh, what who who would control the private sectors. And how to control the so industry sector. was asking who controls us. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that I would never ask that question. For yeah, me, yeah, that is interesting. This is Airbus okay. panelist. Okay, let's directly. If, if if you allow me, I would go first to uh, to uh, Airbus uh, because uh, Carlo. Uh, first of all, you want to be controlled. I understood. That's fine. But the second thing is, uh, what are your expectations for ISAF, and what is you, what are you really, what is your opinion concerning exploration and industry? Maybe you can uh, put the first and the third, uh, third question a little bit together. Well, um, yes, I feel the weight of the 241 industrial participants of the ISF on my on, on my shoulders now. Uh, but um, I mean, to some extent, uh, I mean, I take distance from the. The control, who controls what and so on. I mean, of course, the expectation, uh, I think, is pretty clear, is uh, uh, consolidation of the roadmap, stability of the plants, creating an environment where uh, industry can uh, transit from the role of a contractor to partner and entrepreneur. That means you're expecting from ISEF a definition of a roadmap. No, 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 no. What I was saying before is a consolidation or consolidation of the roadmap, which will enable basically the implementation of the, obje of the exploration objectives. So that's what I've understood. The, the, the previous panel was speaking of conver uh, convergence of the objectives. So this is something that definitely we welcome because a stable, let's say, uh, planning environment is uh, what is necessary in order to generate, uh, let's say, investment and business. So that is basically wh uh, what I was after. Uh, regarding the involvement of the uh, of industry, of course, uh, the regulatory framework, I think it's, uh, it's also quite important. So uh, I wish that together with objectives, technologies, and drivers, there will be also on the occasion of the next ISF, uh, uh, let's say, attention on what will be the regulatory framework that will enable the involvement of several actors being institutional and, and private sector to, uh, let's say, achieve this grand objective. Um, your last question was about uh, how to integrate private companies, but this is uh, well. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, I mean, it's different case by case on uh, case by case. But again, in general, uh, as I said before, a stable a stable uh, working um, uh, sorry a stable uh, planning environment is the one that will enable the presence of uh, let's say the, the 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 participation of companies that are there to do business to offer services, of course. And, uh, and also to support these uh, in, in, in PPP. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, that I also mentioned when I was in Tokyo, uh, um, uh, don't neglect the value of low Earth orbit in this case. I mean, we always mention low Earth orbit as a technology enabler. I think it has also the value of, uh, let's say, uh, a partnership playground, in the sense that that is where, having the experience of 20 years of operations, we can practice on how public and private sector can work together, how we can eventually take the best out of our capabilities and amplify our skills in order to export that model also to future uh, uh, objective and exploration destinations. Okay, thank you very much. So as you see over here, this uh, podium is rather, uh, let's say, gender 
concentrated, let's call it like this. Uh, so uh, if there is a question of... You never know, you never know. Uh, so if there is, especially from the ladies <laughs> in the room, uh, some special re remark or a question, but also from others, um, then please, you are really welcome to do so. I will hopefully see it, and if not, somebody will cry, and then I will see who is crying, and then some other person is shouting on me. So, Jean-Yves, um, we see also right now, again, tensions, conflicts between nations. Is um, ISAF as such flying above these tensions? Can we really go with uh, exploration beyond earthly borders? Oh, no, I think that uh, since the beginning of uh, the space era, even if uh, the race to the moon has been fueled by uh, the competition between the uh, USSR, by the way, which doesn't exist anymore, and uh, the USA, which still exists. But uh, um, after that, uh, since uh, 1975, there was the Apollo Soyuz mission, and it is clear that uh, cooperation is, uh, since then, stronger than the competition. And uh, this is exactly uh, the spirit that uh, we hear at uh, ISF2. But uh, I had uh, the opportunity to attend both uh, ISF1 in uh, 2014 in Washington, D.C., and ISF2 in Tokyo a few weeks ago. Uh, for me, uh, two remarks. The first one, uh, for exploration, we have exactly the same trend uh, as for the rest of uh, space activities. Uh, more uh, government actors, because uh, if you look to the pictures that we saw, you see a lot of people, and more government actors because uh, in a few years uh, there are more and more countries involved uh, in space and we want to be involved in exploration, and more uh, private companies because this is uh, the general trend. And so uh, between ISF-1 and ISF-2 we have this strong evolution. Now the question is uh, what could we expect, uh, which kind of evolution could we expect between ISF-2 and ISF-3? And uh, it is clear for me that uh, the private sector will be more and more active, but uh, probably with the same kind of evolution that we saw, for instance, for Earth observation. For Earth observation, a few years ago, we had uh, data provided by governments and used by governments. Then we had the first move uh, with data provided by uh, private companies and bought by uh, government. And now we have uh, with uh, systems as uh, Google Earth and so on, it seems that uh, you have a free access to data, but in fact you have a business model which is completely different. And I am sure that uh, if you can sell between brackets because you don't pay anything and uh, someone, a, someone else uh, pays for that. But if you can sell uh, data from Earth observation uh, uh, with, uh, for instance, a Google Earth, I am sure that uh, we will be able in the future to sell data from exploration or features from exploration with the same business model. But something which is interesting is that uh, this evolution is made by companies which are not classical space companies, historical space companies, which are uh, companies coming probably from the internet world and uh, what is uh, a point uh, of interest and uh, we have to follow that in the coming years is to see uh, how the, the internet company will be a key actor in the field of exploration. I want uh, to underline that during the last month the key feature in exploration is uh, red convertible flying to Mars and uh, it has been made by uh, an internet company. <laughs> Thank you very much, Naive. So, of course, I could ask you, Tim, also about the crisis, <laughs> but I will not do that. Uh, no, what I would like really from you, because uh, NASA was with the COTS program, was uh, really entering in a, new, in a new scheme of how to go further on in space. Uh, do you see other instruments, new instruments for future space exploration? And I repeat, if you have to say something, you are not here paid for listening, you are not paid at all, so therefore you had to pay, and therefore please be also then active and say some words. I will see you, I'm sure. So, Tim, what are the future methods, the instruments? Is it the same as in the past? Are we constant for the next 100 years, or what do you see? 
Well, certainly it's not going to be constant. Where you've got the expanding act set of actors that we've already talked about with, with new emerging partners. And so with those new partners, they're going to bring additional resources, new brain power, uh, creative problem solving that we're going to have to roll into our existing mechanisms. We're going to have to start thinking new ways to, to cooperate. Um, the, the legal frameworks that we, that we have set the foundations that we all operate under, but individually, uh, between partners, we're going to have to think about ways to, to perhaps do things faster, to keep up with, other, with, the, with each other, as other partners work quick, more quickly together, as industry emerges, so we'll have to think about how to do things more quickly, more efficiently, and that's going to take working amongst ourselves as well as working with our industrial partners and working with our lawyers. So <laughs> that'll be the, the hard part to overcome. But yeah. We can do that together. Um, the other thing to, to along this line is that we've always done it as a mutual benefit, but I think something that gets lost of amongst partners when they're talking about cooperation is it does not necessarily have to be an equal benefit. As long as each partner coming to the deal views it as being something of a positive for each other, then you can move forward and figure out a way to cooperate. But you don't, you need to get beyond thinking about in terms of equal investment, equal return to be able to bring in some of these new actors that we're talking about that, that may not have as much resources, but have the interest, have new ideas and to get them in, it has to be mutually beneficial, but not necessarily equally beneficial. Okay. May I get back to, um, to Carlo and asking Carlo, okay, you are with Airbus, These are, this is a typical company which is uh, a prime in Europe and um, working very closely with the agencies. Do you see a, a change of the activities of the space agencies when new models are coming? Is a space agency necessary in the future? What is your opinion? Oh, <laughs> good reaction. Next. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of myself when I will look back at this video and I will say I could have said that better. Um, um, I cannot say that. I mean, I think that. Uh, and I, 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 I would. I have to say, especially on looking to exploration. Huh? I yeah, absolutely, I'm, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Not in sending Teslas. Uh, no, no. But that's why I'm, I'm. I was intrigued by what Tim was saying before because. Definitely, I, I share this uh, new form of cooperation uh, because, uh, I mean, definitely the ISS represented a major playground where this collaboration was made, but uh, allow me the, 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 the brutal parallel that sometimes I use. I mean, it's very easy uh, to picnic together when each, each one of us is bringing his own food, his own drinks, his own dessert. Now we are reaching a stage where one of, our, one of the partners will have to be in charge of one of the food of the drinks or dessert. So this basically means a Can new level of collaboration mic, which will require larger question. flexibility, mic, which will yes. require, let's say, more versatility. Is it working? Which will require more, let's say, uh, more uh, uh, flexible accommodation. And this is something that I still believe is a diplomatical work that has to be le left to the governments. Therefore, if your question was, do we need space agencies to do that? I think uh, there is still quite some work to be done. Okay. So there is some reaction from another space agency. Yes, I'm, I'm taking the challenge to that question. Okay, yeah. So the question to you panelists, including the chair, is I, I attended one of the pre-ISEF shindigs in Me Europe. Uh, it was in Brussels, I believe, yeah. And I uh, know it was in Lucca. In Luca, in at uh, first in, yeah, in uh, Prague, and so then in Luca, yeah. then and and so in the, the, the if if I recall, um, one of the main motivators for starting this process, which has led to the ISAF, was to encourage governments to invest in space exploration and invest in space exploration beyond what they're already investing in human spaceflight. So what you know, have we really lost that as the goal for ISAF if we're not really focusing in on trying to get governments to put more money in? I mean, look at what happened at, after ISAF 1, was there more money, or ISAF 2, is there more money? How can you prepare for ISAF 3 with the goal of saying, hey, we want to see a 10% you know, uptick in, in investment or something like that? Okay, Roberto, as you are for the next uh, ISAF uh, responsible, is that an expectation you have? 
I think uh, we should uh, try to help creating the case for more money to be invested and not just to ask for more money without having a case. So I think uh, the idea what to do is uh, most important, uh, is the first step, uh, and then we have to find out uh, how much it costs and who's going to put the money on it. I think this is the, the real important part now is uh, what to do. I think uh, still uh, it is in front of us. Wait, 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 I'm coming. I mean, that was one of the main reasons for the ISEG and the Global Exploration Roadmap was to say, okay, here's what it could look like. Yeah, so, further, and then Jean-Yves, please. And, I mean, just to say what to do together. I mean, to get the government, uh, to which government to invest what, uh, specific, I mean, uh, you need to have a framework, uh, which still, I think, uh, requires some, uh, some, uh, some work to be completely understood. Jean-Yves, you have the mic. You wanted to react on that as well. Give me the mic back. No, I agree with Roberto. I think that uh, we need to have a framework and uh, it's probably uh, the role of agencies to define such a framework, of course, in discussion, uh, we in connection with uh, private companies, but to have a framework, because if we don't have a framework, we see we have uh, some examples uh, which uh, clearly shows that uh, it doesn't work. Further comments or questions or here on the podium? Okay, well, take that mic, then I can still keep this for questions or remarks out of the audience. So please, but Val first, yeah. Val first. I think we need to ask ourselves what sets uh, space agencies apart from uh, the private sector. I think from an agency perspective, because we operate in the public sector, um, environment, uh, a lot of what we do is about mitigating against risk, whereas the private sector, the focus is on being innovative and not so much on the risk. So when you're taking these space exploration interventions, you need to take a balanced approach between mitigating against risk and being innovative at the same time. So I don't think it's necessarily a question of whether you need one or the other, you actually need both, and it's an aspect of partnership. Okay, so Roberto wanted to direct it to react and then I give it over to you. Wait a minute, yeah, Roberto. I, mean, uh, uh, I would also like to call, uh, talk about private sector, uh, to call a uh, um, uh, little bit uh, an issue of language. C uh, private sector means at least two things. Uh, like privatization of the low Earth orbit means that the public sector is going to pay in a different way the private sector to deliver but it's still public money to do but something. But this is not what I, when yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about privatization, but this is but a different uh, But one. this is one way of saying that, so yeah. like private A, and then the private B is whatever the private sector is willing to invest to reach certain results, certain goals, yeah. certain, certain, certain uh, objectives. I think we should uh, clarify private A and private B yes. in order to avoid the misunderstanding because, uh, I mean, uh, 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 Going to, to the moon, as an example, it may call in two private waves, ways, A and B, and uh, to different extent, uh, for different purposes, I think we should better understand what you're talking about. Uh, so I suggest a language which is clear about that. Okay, so you're totally right, and my question was therefore not really clear. But what I, want to, what I would like to say when we are talking about private activities in exploration, we don't mean that the company is producing for ASI or for CNES some instruments. This is anyhow done by private companies, so this is your Model A. So for me, when we are re really talking about private activities in exploration, I see really that private companies go with private money to do something, to earn some money not before getting the contract from the space agency, but to deliver something. So this is my understanding, but maybe diff people are thinking differently. But of course, I can also ask what is the private sector uh, expecting from from ISEF, this was therefore my question was not really clear. You are totally right, uh, Roberto. But now, please. Uh, to, to follow up on that. And area, always introduce yourself for the others, not for uh, me. Sorry, but uh, Chuck Lauer with Rocket Plane. To follow up in that area about the private sector, the new significant capabilities coming up with Blue Origin, New Glenn, spending huge money of uh, Bezos's billions to create a significant capability. Uh, Elon Musk, BFR, how can those capabilities be included in the next iteration of the roadmap and uh, 
um, and, and worked into the baseline business case. Is it a serious question or a rhetoric question? Maybe both. Do you have an idea? Give, no, uh, give no, us an no, answer. No, it's a serious question. How? Maybe, maybe no. you have an answer to that. No, I don't. Okay, uh, who has an answer to it? I mean, let me say that uh, the last uh, few times we met together at the agencies around the, in the various uh, IAC meetings uh, uh, we had, uh, we were clearly saying around this desk there are a few people missing, exactly the one you mentioned. And so far, at least to my knowledge, uh, at least in this part of the world, uh, this f table full of the, all, the part, all the actors has not yet been made. So maybe that could be uh, uh, something which we should really consider uh, for preparation of the next ISAF, because we definitely need uh, to understand what they are doing, what we are doing, and what we can do together. I, not each of the three questions has no answer so far, but maybe working together we can figure out. I'm the moderator, so usually I should not answer any question, but for me it's, it's a daily business, especially of the space agencies, to also have always this directly participation of industry, of academia, even of normal citizens, because at the end of the day we are using, as uh, public agencies, the taxpayers' money, and they should have a say in what we are doing. So not only the politicians, which are also using the money from the same taxpayer. So therefore, I think this participation is important, industry, <laughs> academia, and uh, citizens, and we at ESA, we try to do it. But again, I have to go back again. I'm just the moderator. Some more comments, questions from the audience? I know that we are over time, but I got some signal that I'm allowed to do so. I would never, as a German, go over time without a special permission to do so. <laughs> so, therefore, is there any further reaction here out of the audience? I don't see it. Then I will give all of you a very short remark, either to go to one of the questions again or what you uh, got up. So, this time we go the other way around. We start with you, Tim, and then uh, Roberto has the last and final word. So I, I think from, for me, the, the closing remarks I'll, I'll add is, so for question one for ISEF, I, I think that one of the things we lose sometimes uh, as a group here of, of being the agencies and being the industry that are working daily on this is that we lose, we, we sort of get eager about our business, but we don't do a good job of getting it out there of what we're doing. And so ISEF allows for that to the, uh, when I'm, I'm talking to the ministers, to the government. And so this is an opportunity for, as agencies, to, to get the higher level attention from our governments on what it is that we're doing in the space business and, and just add another window into their insight to try to get their support for future activities and, and then eventually, hopefully, money will follow with that from them as well if they, yes. if they see what they, if they like what they see. Well, if you could, we had this morning a presentation also from Roberto about the, uh, the ISF in Nairobi. Uh, do you think that more African states will participate in the next ISF? But you can also say different words now, but this what would be an interesting question from, from my side. I think it's absolutely necessary because if there is an ambition to be involved in space exploration, unless you are in the room, you're outside the room. So you have to be in the room uh, so the, the next ISAF is something we should be looking forward to as African okay. countries. Okay, thank you. Carlo, special industry requests for the ISAF 3? No, but there was one point which was um, triggered in your questions that um, I think is worth to be um, emphasized again. It's, it's one of the barriers. If I remember well, there was some. And of course, we are living difficult times. I mean, it was not easier before. It's getting a bit more complicated now. Uh, where I think the ISAF can contribute is uh, to play the role of the champion of, um, how should I call it, uh, science diplomacy. I mean, wh when I say, and by saying that, I mean being the, the, the um, let's say, having the science that is facilitating as a driver the diplomatical discussion among various parties that uh, are somehow hampered by complexity of national laws, complexity of international trade regulations, and what we are experiencing also today. So last year I learned for the first time what the CESAM project was in Jordan. I mean, I was amazed by learning about that. And this was something that honestly, without sign, a science driver could have hardly be met. I wish that the ISF uh, could, uh, could be able to do something like this. Okay, thank you. 
Jean-Yves, whatever you like, but if you do not have a special thing in mind, is it ISAF also necessary, something like that for other subjects in space, or is exploration just a typical example for international discussion? No, I think that uh, today uh, space is definitely global because if you speak about uh, climate change, uh, it's global and exploration is global. But I think that uh, the real uh, change of paradigm will uh, happen when uh, the final customer for exploration will be private. Today we have only a government. And uh, the day when uh, people uh, will make money because they will send something uh, to the moon, to Mars or elsewhere, it will become private. But I do repeat, uh, if uh, with uh, a business model uh, change compared to what we saw in uh, Earth exploration, I think that there is uh, some uh, place for improvement. Thank you very much. Yun, so? Uh, I think uh, ICF should make an uh, evolution. Uh, situation is uh, very complicated. Industries and uh, taxpayers and money, something like that. But uh, everyone wants to do the moon, Mars, etc. There is a solution. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Roberto, now, for me, for, for my question to you is the following. Next time you are responsible, for the ICF3, did you get something out of the discussion you can use? Yes, so I, I, I got two things. The first one has been said clearly, um, to have uh, the private and the public sector together, where private means private B, the B one which are investing, okay? okay? Yeah. And the second one, uh, it is uh, something which is coming out from uh, uh, IAF as a war. Uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, in ISF, Three, we should try to give uh, the 3G dimension into the process. Because at the end, you are right when you say that we are responding to uh, not only to space agencies, not only to the few private uh, big investors, but we are responding uh, to the, the taxpayer, said it more nicely, to the public and to the people which are uh, 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 looking at what we are doing and, and, and sharing part of the dream and learning how to do things uh, uh, about exploration. And so I think a b great success uh, of the IAF, uh, uh, I, I thank uh, uh, jean for that, uh, introducing that is the 3G dimension, which is extremely powerful element, uh, uh, which, which cross really across border on, gra on, on Earth uh, in anticipating crossing border in space. I think this, uh, uh, we should find a way to get this uh, dimension in, in this process. Okay, thank you very much to the podium. I hope I get your support for that. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much to all of you. It seems to be that my mobile phone is too much known by people, so I got questions by phone in addition. Uh, for instance, uh, who selected just exactly these people and not other people, other countries worldwide? There's always a selection. We'll just look for the brightest ones. So thank you very much and have a nice evening.